Hello and welcome to Fiber Trek. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome on this creative journey here in the Northwoods of Maine. On this edition, we're going to be talking about book binding, which includes a new book for my shelf. I will be chatting with you about some knitting updates, some spinning and embroidery. A deep heartfelt thank you to those that support production of this vlog and creative work through Patreon or through Coffee. It is deeply humbling and I find it very encouraging. For those that like, subscribe, comment, share their insight, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're all here. Let's catch up. to be very satisfying. Um, you saw me put together that book using the Hapazome fabric I featured on my uh, recent episode. And I love that this particular pursuit pulls together a bunch of other creative endeavors, especially around printing. Printing on paper, printing on fabric. Um, I got to use my marbled papers. That was some old linen. Um, the book, itself um, is very pragmatic. I love that it's useful. It makes a good gift. It's very personalized. Um, it can compile a lot of just different opportunities to be expressive. So I think for me, um, as I expanded on my past history of working with books and altered books, um, moving into using signatures, case and binding, book cloth, um, that was just a, a nice way to level up um, my finished product and make it more durable and um, make it look a bit more uh, refined and sophisticated. So I'm super thankful for um, Chanel Lee um, and her uh, YouTube channel, Bitter Melon Bindery. So I found her a while ago and if you've been with me i fool around with pamphlet stitch and i made books for my friends and i was loving kind of putting or repurposing old books um etc book pages and kind of collaging and um when i found the bitter melon bindery channel um that was a real opportunity to look at um in a very explicit, methodical, well-explained way how to work with signatures and how to create the case and book cloth, etc. So um, 
I was super excited when I found out she'd published a book, um, which is Handmade Books at Home. And between um, using the book and her online tutorial, um, that's the second case in book that I've done. And the book itself, which I'm gonna feature um, upcoming, is very explicit with lots of photographs. So um, it's one or the other would work, but both together make it even easier. Um, I was also inspired by uh, Four Keys, I think is it Four Keys Bindery? Um, this channel featured a rebinding of an old book, um, Dune, um, and working with leather and embossing and, oh, it, it's so beautiful. My mom and I watched it. Um, the couple videos he had, we were just mesmerized and enthralled by this work. And um, because this is the way I think, uh, my dad was gifted when he graduated um, from college, a copy of The Hobbit and a copy of The Lord of the Rings that were leather bound. And they were early uh, 70s, late 60s editions. Um, and The Lord of the Rings, it's all three books um, in one case binding and it is completely disintegrated. The pages itself are fine but the actual binding on the back of the book. Um, so when I was watching Four Keys he was doing a lot of restoration and it got me thinking about rebinding that book, potentially rebinding it into three separate books and doing specific uh, book cloth embroidered um, for each of the books. My Hobbit is also falling apart. My scrolls are back. Um, and so anyway, I've been thinking about that as a project that would bring in some embroidery. Um, anyway, I know it's kind of epic. <laughs> is it a bit out of my realm of or scope of skills potentially, but um, the books are not being used. It's falling apart. Um, so it feels like a, an application that could have a real positive outcome. Um, and it's currently, as I said, not being used. You can't read it, etc. So anyway, so um, that uh, uh, tutorials or um, watching the four keys got me thinking about that. And so I've been practicing some of those skills, signatures, case and bindings, etc., uh, leading up to that. So I'll be thinking about that this fall. Um, I like books because you can do it relatively easy. You can use cardboard and an old bed sheet for your book cloth, and you can use whatever thread you have and copy paper and um, pamphlet bindings. You can use cloth. You can um, you can do um, different sizes for scrapbooking for pictures, um, and there's obviously different types of binding methods. So I just find it so versatile and interesting and uh, approachable. And like I said, able to pull things together. So I think I'm going to um, give you a glimpse at uh, Chanel's book, Handmade Books at Home, and see if there is an opportunity for application in your creative pursuits um, with some book binding. The main idea I wanna emphasize about this book is how explicit it is. I, I think I used that word a couple times when I was describing my experience and really covers a variety of different skill sets. Very clear in the beginning, identifying tools, terms. Um, so I liked the layout. There was like this kind of index in the beginning and then application um, throughout all the different projects. I would encourage you to take a look at her YouTube channel and to give some bookbinding a try.
In this portion of the episode, I'm going to be talking about my knitting, my spinning, and embroidery as you saw. Before I do that though, I just want to reiterate how deeply grateful I am for those that contribute financially, whether that's through a subscription-based platform like Patreon or through a donation-based platform like Coffee. Uh, I find that type of support very encouraging um, and humbling, um, but I feel like it really enriches my experience with this documentation kind of format um, through the you know purchase of equipment supplies um, my own time that's invested uh, so i just want to make sure that i um, articulate that deep gratitude for that action if you're interested patreon is a subscription uh, it's per episode um, the minimum is three dollars per episode i don't publish more than two per month so it's a basically a six dollar a month subscription and i also offer bonus content every month so that's about three videos per month and um, coffee i'm still kind of figuring out how i can add benefit to that but if you'd like to just donate a one-time um, gig then you can do that through coffee and if you are shopping at the Woolly Thistle, you can also shop through the affiliate link listed below and I get a kickback at no cost to you. And yeah, so those are some uh, financial ways you can support, but I also really appreciate liking and subscribing your own investment of time, comments and insights. Um, they are expansive to me. There's a lot of wisdom out there and I really want this uh, to be a complimentary experience. Uh, a lot of you drive my creative uh, interest in discovery and exploration and I really hope that the content here does that for you. So thank you so much all around. Um, but let's talk about you know what's been happening in the knitting and spinning and embroidery. The knitting will be very familiar if you've been with me for a while, except for one thing. Um, the yell is still on the go. This is a pattern by Marie Wallen. I am working on the all over portion uh, color work of the body and a beautiful rich brown and a beautiful oatmeal-y beige. And I'm just resting in that as I start to slightly anticipate the impending experience of the shoulder shaping and steek uh, placement, etc. So. That's just going to be happening in the background. Um, I've been putting a lot of time into that in the evenings um, and really enjoying it, but I'm talking about it a lot. So the yell is happening and evolving. Um, I am working on the Hobbit vest by Lisa Chemery. I've talked about that from my nephew in a Harrisville Designs yarn. I've split for the body and sleeves. So that is happening and I'm hoping it will be done for him by the fall. And on another hobbity note, which seems to be always a running theme for me, um, I cast on the Tanya Barley cardigan there and back again uh, through the inspiration of my friend Nicole, who's also knitting this. Um, we were talking about that piece fleece I wanted to work with and I was looking for a project for that and uh, she suggested this and it is perfect. Now, the original was knit in a DK weight yarn and I am knitting it in a kind of worsted Aran weight. And so I've gone up two needle sizes. I'm using a US eight and I am finagling my gauge. I'm getting about four stitches to the inch. And so I picked the third size to knit and doing some calculations, um, I realized that I wasn't really gonna have enough um, ease in the bicep and too much ease in the body. So this is knit top down, it's a yoke construction. And I think when I go to split uh, for the sleeves and the body, I'm going to put more stitches on my sleeves and that will then create the correct um, and preferred body circumference and ease as well as for the arms. So I am just about to finish the yoke a design which is lovely slip stitches um, in kind of a tree pattern um, and the piece lease is really adding to the textural experience of that so everything really pops off the fabric um, it's very cushy it's very plush it's got a lot of structure to it I like that kind of heft I think it will be a beautiful um, outerwear garment for winter um, so that project is just um, calling to me. I, that's what I gravitate towards in the evenings. It's what I want to pick up. I'm making uh, good progress. It's moving along. I'm seeing um, I evolve very quickly. So there is a bit of short row shaping before you uh, split for the body and the sleeves, which I need to get through. Um, so, but yeah, that is 
um, just a really, it's just a gem in my knitting world. Um, and you can find it on Ravelry, it's Tanya Barley, the there and back again cardigan. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and if I can, I'd love to have that for the fall, fingers crossed. So those are really the three projects that kind of have me uh, captivated at the moment. I do have my crochet um, blanket kind of lingering here in my periphery. It is, I am like a whole new person as it has cooled down quite a bit. The humidity has dropped. I'm getting out, doing things. I'm up and about. I'm happy to have things on my lap in the evenings. I've been wearing sweaters. Rob and I are getting ready to um, head up to a cabin, which is even further north. So I'm like thinking about what I can take um, and uh, get done that I really wasn't attending to when it was like 90% humidity and, you know, I just didn't want to get off the couch. So super excited about this kind of weather pattern and what it's doing for my um, my project uh, progress so um, yeah so the crochet is kind of like hmm, thinking about that I've been working on putting squares together into the blanket instead of making squares which I could do too but I'm loving watching the squares come together it's very satisfying and I'd like to finish putting together what I have into um, the blanket as a kind of marker of progress. So that's kind of lingering there. I have been doing quite a bit of spinning. I finished plying the um, singles from the Artifacts of Appreciation bat that um, was gifted to me. This was a bat and it was a blend of uh, wool, silk, and I think alpaca, maybe llama. Um, so I spun that up. It's finished two skeins, somewhere around six and a half ounces or six and a bit uh, ounces of um, two-ply yarn. And from there, I went ahead and spun up some Romney that I found from Bybrook Farm. This was so satisfying. It's a deep, rich brown. Um, I've got a three and a half ounce skein finished and plied um, and I have a bobbin full of singles so I have more ply which I hope to get to tonight and I've been spinning that at a heavier weight I'm doing that on my shocked sidekick and um, it's been just it's just being fed onto the bobbin. So um, some of the other pieces I have um, spun, it's like, you know, frog hair and takes me forever and it takes me forever to ply. But this, I was just like, feed it onto the bobbins. Let's have a big, beautiful, plump, um, kind of uh, squishy, uh, Romney-esque, lofty yarn. So it's worked out really great. It's exactly what I wanted. And again, it's moving at a pace that makes me feel motivated and I am, kind of starting to really move through my fiber stash, which is very satisfying. So that is a two-ply Romney uh, from Bybrook Farm. And then, um, yeah, last I wanted to move forward on my Alice Starmore um, class, which is the creative course number three, and I knitted and felted the belt portion. This class features a belt and a bag, and I have been following along with her um, felting of beads. I've looked at that, but I haven't really worked on it. And then I decided that I should just do the embroidery, which is what really attracted me to this project in the beginning. My main color for the belt is Glen. Um, this is Alice Starmore Hebridean Two Ply. It's her yarn. And I am working with Corn Crake as my complimentary embroidery piece. Now she has all of the embroidery laid out for you in videos. Appreciate the visual format. It's really nice to see each of the stitches that she used um, in, a, in a visual way. And again, it's very explicit and you get uh, a really good feel for how to move um, through the fabric and what she's doing and her placement. Now she went for a um, kind of sea or ocean theme and I decided I didn't really want to do that. I love to work with botanicals as you know. So I hauled out uh, em knit, embroidering, embroidery on knits by Judith Azit Gumlach from Lina publications and I kind of used some of her pictures as a reference to build some ferns and that's what I've been working on. Now, I'm not overly happy with the shape of that first botanical but I'm like you know what I'm gonna fill in I'm not gonna have like I originally I thought I might have a centerpiece and then build around that but I think I'm just gonna do organic forms all over it um, and get that embroidery done with different floral themes um, plant branches etc. 
So like I said, I'm the main color of that belt is Glen. The complimentary currently is Corn Crake. I'm kind of working on a fern. And um, the nice thing about embroidering on felt, and specifically this is fold fabric. It was knitted and then it was wet felted. Um, I'm not super concerned about tension, so I don't need to put this in a hoop. I'm able to just work on it um, freehand. Um, and I do know that in Embroidery on Knits, she does talk about tension because you're working on knitted fabric that hasn't, doesn't have any stabilization to it through the folding process, and so you do need to put it in a hoop. So for this particular project, I appreciate not having to be so concerned about tension and being able to kind of freeform it, um, etc. So yeah, so I'm super excited about um, that very open, um, feeling that you get um, in doing freeform embroidery and not following a specific uh, pattern that I put on or drew on to the fabric. Yeah, so that's the Alice Starmore belt progress. Um, I think that really takes me to the end of what I've been doing. Um, you know, there's the book, there's the um, printing. I, I don't know where I'll go next. I, I'm just feeling, again, like I said, I feel so invigorated uh, with um, this the weather so potentially get out into the dye pots for the end of August thank you for joining me uh, I hope this finds you well and in good spirits many fond wishes and blessings until I see you next time take care bye